Welcome back to the biggest conversation on television tonight. This is about the Finance Bill 2023 and its implication to your individual budgets and of course it has a bearing to virtually every sector of this economy. Because if you look at the hike, for example, in fuel, it affects not only the end users, but every product that needs petroleum in that line is actually affected. That's why tonight we are hosting this conversation with a panel of experts. We are also hosting a number of employees here who possess the payslip and they're likely to see the reduction. We're also looking at the employers who are majorly affected and the decisions they will be making going forward. And apart from that, a panel of experts will be telling us everything that is hidden or all the gray areas in this financial bill, 20, finance bill 2023. But I'm with my colleagues, Noah Kipkemboi. On the other side, you'll be speaking to the employers. And of course, Ali Manzu is speaking to you, the employees. The majority of you holding the payslip. I'll be hosting a panel of experts. They are already here. And of course, my colleague, Beatty, uh, Becky, will also be hosting a number of Kenyans from different sectors who have one or two things to say about this. But this is a payslip. I want to talk about the payslip because this is a simulator of how much money you earn and how much money you will be giving to the government. And I'll be telling you, if you're earning below 100,000, how much more money you're supposed to be paying. Apart from that, I'll be telling you over 100,000 shillings, how much additional amount you'll be giving the government. And apart from that, I'll be telling you also, if you're earning over 500,000, remember that tax bracket, that is 2.5%. If it's 500,000 to 800,000, how much you'll be paying and over 800,000, if at all you earn more than 800,000, the bracket is 35%. How much more you'll be giving the government? That in a little bit. But picture this. Earning about 87,000 shillings and taking home only 17,000 shillings. That's 77,000 shillings less than what you earn. That is the much paisley for a teacher in a um, picture that is being painted by this is the situation most employees right now in the country find themselves in and the financial burden for many is said to get worse with the introduction of the housing levy and of course the increase in the nhif contributions our senior reporter rita tinina tells us what to expect in the proposed deduction if they are uh, affected in the current financial year a week after President William Ruto signed into law the contentious finance bill, pain at the pump is already being felt following an increase in the price of petroleum products. And employees are set to feel the pinch. They are staring at shrinking pay slips following the introduction of the housing levy and higher NHIF contributions. Loans, insurance, SACO and other deductions aside, employees in the 50,000 shillings salary bracket currently take home 40,840 shillings, with 1,200 shillings going to NHIF. Now the pay slip will have a new entry, the housing levy. Employers and employees are obligated to contribute 1.5% of the employee's basic salary, meaning employees will pay 750 shillings to the housing levy and contribute 1,375 to the NHIF, leaving a net pay of 40,166 shillings. Those earning between 90,000 and 99,000 shillings will part with 1,350 shillings for the housing levy. With employees set to remit 2.75% of the gross pay to the NHIF, they will part with 2,475 shillings for the fund, up from 1,200. Their pay will reduce by 2,000 shillings. Employees earning 100,000 shillings have been paying 1,700 shillings to NHIF. Now they will pay 2,750, add 1,500 shillings for the housing levy, and their pay will reduce from the current average of 75,415 to 73,473 shillings. In a move set to equalize payments across all income brackets, top earners will be affected more by the increase in NHIF rates. Those earning above 500,000 shillings will pay 14,000 shillings for NHIF, up from 1,700 shillings. They will part with 7,650 shillings towards the housing levy. Their payslip will be less 
15,863 shillings. Employees in the 801,000 shillings and above salary bracket will pay 12,450 shillings towards the housing levy and 22,825 shillings to NHIF. New deductions bringing their net pay to 551,000 down from 586,000 shillings. The new deductions will worsen the financial burden on employees. But even before the proposed deductions are affected, employees are dealing with near negative figures on their pay slips. This is an actual pay slip for a teacher for the month of March this year. The teacher has 87,943 shillings in total earnings. With provident fund deductions, two commercial loans amounting to 45,000 shillings, contributions to Mwali Musako and the Teachers Union Coupet, 17,552 shillings towards pay as you earn, and 1,500 shillings for the NHIF, the teacher is left with 17,000 shillings to take home. That will change with an additional deduction of 1,305 shillings for the housing levy. The pay slip paints the true picture of the financial struggles employees on the ground are dealing with even before another burden is added through the proposed deductions. Rita Tinina, KTN News. All right, now that's a sample pay slip of a teacher. I mean, from 87,000 shillings, you're taking home 17,000 shillings. I know there are loans in there, there are other commitments, but look at the tax. I want to show you just a few examples. And I'll start with the mere, uh, the most basic of it, which is 1,500 going to the housing levy as a basic. So if you're earning 100,000 shillings, 15 or 1,500 shillings of the housing levy, and the proposed NHIF, remember, it's not yet been affected is about 2750 as a basic 1500 your deduction will be about 2000 your additional expenditure on your pay slip will be about 2112 that's the additional money that you'll be spending but that's if you're earning 100,000 shillings and below about 2112 is the basic look at uh, the person earning above 100,000 so we took a sample of about 300,000 the proposed housing levy at that percentage goes to 4500 and the NHIF, if implemented, it will be about 8,250. The additional is 8,717.5 additional amount of money that is leaving your pay slip. So I want to try this. I want to increase this amount because this is uh, above uh, 300, above 100,000 shillings. So let's assume that you earn about 400,000. Let's see considerably how much this, how much increases. Now it goes significantly to 12,000. 105. If you are earning 400,000 shillings, look at the housing fund. Go housing levy goes to 6,000. And of course, NHIF, the proposed amount, takes it to 11, increasing this significantly. If you add that, because this is an increase in your payslip, about 12,150. And still, just to sample this, I want to show you something else. Let's assume here you're earning 450,000. Let's see how much of an increase. It goes to 15,000 and 15,992. That's if you are earning 400 and actually this is 4 million so this is a little bit more. Let me just work on my figure accurately again and say here if you are earning 450,000 what it brings you is that 13,798. That is the increase on your pay slip. NHIF goes to 12,375. Housing levy goes to 6,750. Let's uh, look at the other scenario now. The person who's earning over 500,000 shillings. I worked with 700. They increased 10,500 housing levy and 19,250 on the proposed NHIF. But Let's just do our case scenario here that you're earning 800,000 shillings because that's where I'm headed next to this. And I'll tell you why. So if you're earning, we just put it below 750,000 shillings. Um, 750,000 shillings. Now, if you're earning that, this is how much you are going to pay, 29,903. But I know you want to know because this bracket of 35% the increase. If you're earning 800,000 and above, what will we get? So over 800,000. First, I worked with 830,000. Housing levy is 12,450, while NHIF 
is 22,825, significantly raising the amount of money going out of your pay slip by 34,994, rounded off to 35,000 additional amount of money that you'll be taking out there if you're earning more than 800,000 shillings. So let's work with the flat figure before I conclude this. I look at, uh, Joan is telling me to pick a number here. Joan, how much money do you want, do you earn? Want me to work on here. So let me see, um, Joan salary, Joan is our director downstairs. So she earns about a million shillings. Let's see how much she earns and how much more she will be giving to the government, right? They put it more. That's uh, 100,000, so let me add her that. So um, this is how much more money Joanne will be spending uh, in terms of getting money out of her pay slip. The housing levy goes to 15,000 for her. Uh, NHIF, a flat rate 1,700, but goes to 27,500, and she will be coughing an additional 49,126. So anyone earning 1 million shillings and above, that is precisely how much money they'll be spending more, 49,126, which is, by the way, the most of it. So I want to show you something else here tonight, because uh, the Economic Survey 2023, 20, uh, we picked a few of them that have of interest to you. So first, I'll begin with the housing levy before my panel can weigh in. I'll try to explain the total number of people employed in Kenya currently is 2 million nine hundred and forty let's round it off to two million nine hundred the private sector is the biggest employer in this country taking two million government employs the nine hundred and forty which is the balance and total wage bill in the country is two point four trillion against the budget of three point six trillion look at what happens because i'm still dealing with the housing levy and from the economic survey so the proposed housing levy is 3%. 1.5% you who owns the pay slip and the person who pays you, the employer, who, by the way, are in the building tonight, they'll be telling us this will pay 1.5%. Total goes to 3%. Now, out of the 3%, the employer will be spending 36 billion. That's the 1.5 times the number of people that are totally employed, both government and the private sector. So we multiply that with the 24 trillion which is a total amount of money in the wage bill let me explain that further because the private sector takes the majority of the wage bill how much 1.8 trillion so you ask yourself where is the other 600 billion now this is the government that is how much money the government holds 600 billion shillings the private sector in this calculation will be spending 27.3 billion shillings while the government out of the 600 wage bill they'll be spending 9 billion shillings on the housing levy let's explain further so the total contribution of the three percent goes to 72.1 billion shillings now you ask yourself who is the majority who's spending more money you guess it right they have the most employees they employ the most two million people and that goes to the private sector how much will they be paying 54.59 percent that is of the one that is 1 1.8 trillion and of course the government as i said earlier is 600 million 600 billion and they'll be paying much less now you understand how this will work out and the 72 billion shillings who will be spending most of it, who will be contributing most, the private sector, the biggest employee, out of the 2.4, they employ 1.8 million people, right? So the other costs that have gone up, we picked uh, the VAT on petroleum products, 8% to 16%. I took an example of Nairobi tonight. So I'm telling you the increase based on EPRA's reviews the other day. That's last week on Friday, 13 shillings goes to 195. Kerosene, uh, 12 shillings goes to 179. At 67, while uh, kerosene, that's diesel kerosene, goes to 173 with the additional 11 shillings from EPRA. Away from that, far-flung areas, you expect they'll be paying more. So you're looking at Teluak, you're looking at Moyale. They'll be paying more than 200 shillings if this goes through you remember it's already suspended eight to sixteen percent so let's talk about the corporate tax if you have a company that gives you about 25 million shillings and above every year you expect to be pay paying 30 percent corporate tax from one percent that's pretty high but that's where it's been based and of course as a result of the corporate tax and the employers are here and noah kipkemboy will be talking about this they definitely must face financial challenges and they have very few options 
to do when it comes now to the challenges that are possessed by the current bill, uh, current act, that's the finance bill 2023. So what are their options? They will obviously be calling for downsizing. Noah Kipkemboy will be talking to them. Or alternatively, they'll tell us, like Standard Group will tell us, now we can't support everyone here, so please take the pay cut, take a haircut. So this is the salary cuts and downsizing and of course the financial challenges that potentially because additional money that goes through. All right, so the other one we picked, we picked is the pay as you earn. And uh, if you are within the tax band of 500 to 800,000 shillings monthly, you're paying about 32.5%. Now, if you are earning 800,000 and above, you'll definitely be paying 35%. And finally, there are two cases that have taken the Finance Act 2023 to court. Okay, I'm Tata to begin with. It was suspended last week on Friday versus the National Treasury. Apart from that, there's Peter Odiambo Agoro versus the CS National Treasury, National Assembly, and two others. Now, these are the people who have taken this finance bill to court. And of course, it's suspended until the 5th when there will be a mention. And probably they lift it. I don't know what will happen, but let's see what happens on the 5th. And finally, you ask yourself, it was supposed to comment on the, comment on the 1st of July, which was a weekend, July 1st, 2023, majority date for most of the provisions in the Financial Act to uh, take effect. There's another date of September 1st, 2023, and the rest that are not falling between September and July take effect on the 1st of January next year, 2024. Very interesting perspective that I'm going to put to my guests tonight. But before I sit with them, because I already have them, including Kimani Kuria, who is a chairperson of the Finance Committee of the National Assembly, Finance and Planning Committee of the National Assembly. I have uh, the CEO from uh, uh, Sentonomi Wedaka Katumia, who is talking to us. They'll be breaking down these figures because they understand the spending power and how we need to um, actually austerity right now we really need to think on how to save more or even if not to save more how to cut on our expenditure in order to get by and of course i have kimani kuria who's the chair of finance and planning committee of the uh, national assembly and john kitui the executive director oxfam kenya they'll be talking to us about this but let's raise the questions first they're already seated here let me take you to noah Noah, you saw the pay slip what is the employers what are they saying about the pay slip and their likely reaction to these new additions in the pay slip as given to us well, thank you very much ken for that question in fact while we were looking at the figures you were presenting in regards to the impact of the change introduction of new tax brackets of those earning above 500,000 to 800,000, 32.5%, and those above 800,000, uh, that is 35%. We are calculating if somebody is making a million shillings a month, 350 Gs flat, first of all, that one goes to pay as you earn. But majority of Kenyans do not relate to that kind of pay slip. And that brings me to John Bugos, the MD, Move Cafe and Bistro. John, many Kenyans operate eateries. You run a restaurant. And these are the jobs, you know, when the president talks about majority of Kenyans come hustlers. He calls them the bottom of the pyramid, bottom up economy. These are the kind of the jobs that we have in our economy. So give me a practical example in regards to an average earning for your employee uh, how much do they make a month and uh, now with the introduction of some of these levies for example housing levy uh, how are, are they taking that hit um yeah i think um, obviously we are big like i said earlier we are a big employer mm -hmm. right but of course the 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 income within our industry is obviously not that high so for example if a waiter is earning on average around 15k per month um, as we were doing our little calculations just now, you can see suddenly um, when they would take home around 12K, now they're taking home around 11,000. Mm -hmm. Now, that difference of that 1,000 makes such a big difference in someone's life, especially today in this economy, right? Because that could be their bus fare, that could be the medicine for their kids. Mm -hmm. So there's this, there's, on top of the, the obvious um, financial burden that uh, that uh, this bill is is putting on 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 our staff i'm also looking at the psychological impact you know i'm looking at the at how i'm seeing already how the staff are are 
demotivated mm -hmm. in a way because as an employer, yes, I feel you. I'm going through the same thing. I would like to, to support you. I'd like to help you, but how? Mm -hmm. I know. That's quite a concern. And, and coming to you, Stephen, because as a federation of Kenya employers, uh, there, there, there's been push when inflation is, is getting higher by the day. It tends to erode some of the gains. So if you're making 15,000 uh, six years ago compared to now, uh, definitely it doesn't have the same impact. Uh, for you as employers, looking at that pay slip now, uh, is there a probability or consideration of I will care for my employees and sort of raise uh, something small and tough for them so that uh, they can be able to, uh, you know, weather this storm? Is, it, is that a consideration? Um, the, you have to ask yourself, where is the employer getting this money? Care is one thing you really feel for what the employee is going through, but you're still going through the same thing. Because if you look at the finance bill, if you take, say, the VAT on, on, uh, on, on petroleum, it's still hitting you as an employer, mm -hmm. and many other provisions that requires you also as an employer to contribute. So when we talk about uh, salary increment, the first thing we should think about is affordability and how sustainable is it? Because salary increment is a sticky uh, um, kind of expenditure. Once you increase somebody's salary, you cannot reverse on it. Uh, there are ILO conventions and uh, labor laws that govern how the salary movements are and adjustments. And so what, what, uh, what situation are we in? There's only one way to come out of this. Can we work on our productivity as a country? Mm -hmm. increase our productivity to a level where then uh, we can be able to increase our pay. Okay. Because if that doesn't increase, then you're in a situation where you'll have very unhappy uh, employees, uh, their morale will be low, and you have also an employer who is really stressed thinking of, wait a minute, should I just close this business or what do I need to do? Definitely. And so we are all in this. And as, a, as the Federation, there is something that we stand for. We stand for social dialogue. That then, uh, in the situation we are in today, the employers, the workers, and the government need to engage each other and find mechanisms that will improve our productivity and mechanisms that will improve our products' access to more uh, better, high-quality markets. Okay. Because if that happens, then uh, you start seeing the movement of the of the income for for the people. Definitely. Without that. But the we SI unit of productivity, uh, Bugua, is the single businesses, if we can work on that. And I'm looking at your single restaurant. How do you boost productivity in this environment? <clears throat> I think, um, no, for, for us guys, we are always looking at costs, right? Uh, cost control. For example, when we're when we developing our menu, we obviously have to cost... Remember in our last conversation when we said we have to cost every single item individually, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest challenge we are facing right now is that it's becoming almost impossible to reduce our costs, right? I want to increase productivity, for example, when it comes to, to the labor force, right? I want to make sure that um, when the guests are coming to the restaurant that we have enough waiters, we have enough chefs, you know, so that you know, we make sure that the guest is satisfied so that they can come back, right? And that's how we grow. But then now there's all these other costs. For example, we do a lot of live music at Move, right? Um, electricity, we used to pay around uh, 25, 27K per month. Now we are paying 45,000 when business has actually reduced because there's people don't have the disposable income. The people that used to come and, you know, put a mzinga on the table of, of Glen Fiddich, now they're coming and drinking two beers. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's becoming, it's becoming, you know, you know, you try this, you try and reduce your costs, you try and increase productivity, but at the end of the day, it's almost like you're just going around in, 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 in a circle in the same spot. Definitely. I mean, now, uh, can I want to bounce back this conversation to you? I'm glad you have uh, critical players when it comes to the financial world. And, uh, employers here are saying it's sort of uh, they're chasing their own tail and um, 
you are asking them to increase productivity but it's a little bit difficult because of some of these changes how do they survive that's the question especially that waiter who's making 15 g's a month how do they weather some of this increased cost that's the big question over to you ken thank you no and uh, perhaps that's the biggest question not only the employers uh, are asking how they will manage their wage bills. I mean, an increase of even 2,000 shillings on your pay slip is not small money by any measure, no. And it's an important question because everyone is asking, including us, how are you going to get by? And of course, the measures that institutions such as the Standard Group, for example, that employs a lot of people is going to do in order to manage this because it's an additional amount of money out of pay slip, which means if they have to cushion us with the current um, cost, high cost of living and inflation, they need to give us a little bit more money. But remember, Noah, our salaries have refuse to grow. They are the only stunted <laughs> individuals, if I may give them character. So our salaries are the only individuals who have refused to go. However, there are people who are smiling. Remember the other day when the president spoke? Because there are people who have had their salaries increased by between 7 and 10%. So they are a little bit lucky because they are going to be cushioned. What about the rest, the majority? But to bring this conversation, uh, I'm here with a panel of experts. I'll be speaking to them. Kimani Kuria is here. He's, he's gotten to speak to us. I mean, they were in charge of this from the beginning. And before I speak to uh, Kuria, you are two Kuriers. I'll have to use that name. And, uh, no, no, get, no. Uh, why that? I'll, 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 I'll have to use other names. Let me get this out of the way, Moshimiwa, because um, there are sections of this act that were supposed to take effect on the 1st of July, and they are the majority. Second ones in September, and the other ones next year. What has happened to these sections? Are they being implemented? What happens essentially? Because people are saying the, the courts have put a break to it temporarily. In, in two days, they'll be handling it. But what happens to those sections? First of all, it's very sad um, what the courts have decided to do because uh, the process that stopped the implementation of the Finance Act of 2023, you know, we had the same team seek uh, these orders uh, actually three times, all of which were denied. So it's quite interesting how at the very tail end after the, the bill has been enacted or been assigned to the, by the president and those orders are actually granted because uh, orders were sought to stop debate on the bill, orders were sought to, to, to stop any um, the, 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 the forwarding of the bill to the president for, for accent, they were sought, they were denied. So we had very different sorts of orders being said to just stop the process, mm -hmm. to stop debate on the process, to, vote, to stop voting on the process, to vote the assent of the, of, of the bill by his actions to the president, which were all not granted by the court. So that could be quite interesting how somebody was able to get those orders at the tail end uh, after just yeah, it, was, it was it was assigned to the president because mm -hmm. the same grounds were denied by three consecutive because it was positions. premature the, 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 the bill had not become law so it was uh, it was not possible to stop a process that had not concluded i think that was and uh, the players didn't know that they they knew that so so, so we have we see a deliberate mm -hmm. there was definitely a, a well orchestrated deliberate effort to make sure that this particular democratic process did not take place, okay. including someone trying to guard the parliament from mm -hmm. debating a piece of legislation which so, was in so their mandate. But, but Kenya, the question is, yes. uh, yeah. back to your question, of course, uh, uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has demonstrated itself on various, various occasions that we are, uh, that it's an administration that respects the rule of law. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the implementation of these particular uh, uh, clauses that would come to effect the 1st of July have said definitely not been implemented mm -hmm. as with the, the, the decision that uh, the, the appeal will, will make on the, on the 5th of July. But having said that, what does this mean? Again, it means that uh, uh, factories that were preparing to roll out huge manufacturing fertilizer as a result of our zero rating raw materials of fertilizer Hello. have actually had to put a pause. Mm -hmm. Factories are sort of setting up to, to manufacture pesticides controls for our farmers are actually okay. on hold. Okay. 
uh, the, 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 the reduction of, of taxes for mobile, uh, by now you should have seen a reduction of the MPESA charges because the excess duty on mobile fund, mobile money transfer was being reduced from 20% to 15%. The transfer, okay. Okay. the excess duty on transfer of bank, of transaction, the bank was being reduced from 20% to 15%. So we are, we are having to pay more now. You know, as you wait, the, okay. We, we, so what you're what you're telling Kenyans today, there are a number of things that were supposed to happen that are not happening because of, so no, everyone is losing. That's what you're saying in, in this period. In, in fact, we have many losses. For example, by just uh, taking removing the eight percent okay, I'm, I'm told, VAT on I'm, LPG gas, I'm told I need to sort your mind. Cheaper now. No, yeah. we, I'm told I have to sort out your mic. I know I'm cutting you short, but I'm gonna come. Let me talk to uh, Kitui. Um, from your perspective, uh, just the last part, so we had most of it, don't worry about it. From your perspective from Oxfam, there's a lot of issues that have been raised from the 190, from the employees uh, studio, and of course from the employers. In fact, Noah says they're chasing their tail. They don't know what to do with it. From where you sit, this was imminent. I mean, we debated this thing, we knew it. So what are we supposed to be doing now? Because eventually the government has to operate. Yes, thank you very much, Ken, for having me. Um, I think where we stand now, I think the biggest concern is the Finance Act 2023's impact uh, on economic inequalities. And I think we've listened to employers, we've listened to employees, we've listened to many stakeholders and many analysts. Um, and I think what you should expect is a huge rise in inequality and a huge rise in poverty as a result of the Finance Act. Um, and I say that because I think Oxfam has published every year since a few, for a few years now the inequality report and each year we've actually shown inequality has been increasing. Every year inequality has been increasing. Um, these years the inequality report that we published in February showed that actually for the first time in 25 years inequality had risen because of both extreme poverty deepening but also the extremely rich becoming extremely richer. Okay. So the fact that the finance act it has increased the regressiveness of the tax regime in the sense that people who actually are bearing the biggest burden of paying the taxes will be the people who are employed and the rich actually will get away with a lot of the of the taxes forget about the, the, the rich from a pay paisley perspective it's just the people who are are, are wealthy uh, to that effect uh, the fact that the cost of living this act coming on the back of COVID-19, the mm -hmm. Ukraine war, the locust infestation, all these crises we faced over the past three years, um, it comes at a very bad time, also with the cost of living very, very high. And to be honest, I think the unfairness of the Finance Act is that it does not address sufficiently two critical aspects, which is the government's own expenditure, which is, would have expected that if the government is asking citizens to tighten their belts, that would expect also the government to tighten their belts. And I think the president has promised us severally that we are tightening the belts since they took over uh, power last year from 300 billion austerity acts that never materialized. But we continue seeing all the travel and everything else. So the, the unfairness in the act is that we are asking Kenyans to tighten their belts. We are expecting inequality to go up, but the government itself is not willing to tighten that its belt. Bad. But the second element also is, um, besides tightening the, 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 the belt, is just the regressiveness of, 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 uh, of, of the tax uh, regime, uh, regime itself uh, that, that contributes to, to, the, to, the, to the unfairness that we, that we see. So I think for me the issue is that going forward, I think it's going to be difficult. It was meant to be difficult anyway, given the circumstances we find ourselves and the context we find ourselves, but it needs not to be unfairly so, okay. uh, given the, the, the Finance Act. Uh, uh, that come? The other day when the president was speaking, one of the things that caught the attention of many is a proposal by SRC that the president said it's not applicable right now, especially for parliamentary leadership such as uh, Mr. Kuria here. And of course, there are people whose salary is going to be increased inevitably, 7 to 10 percent. From where you sit, is that sufficient to cushion us first? Do you find that there's a problem with the act that needs to be looked at? Or do you think that there's enough measures that were put in place ahead of this? And as he likes saying, because I've hosted him several times, is the number of benefits in the act outweighs the number of uh, but let me call the bad things in the act. <laughs> Here's the thing, Ken. No one will ever be satisfied with the finance. <coughs> there will always be people who are upset by this. I want to speak to the individual Kenyan themselves. Because in this room, Honorable Kuria has 50 million people he's worried about. 
he's trying to figure out how do I balance that. And I know Kitui here was also planning to see how we can be able to help as many people as possible. But you as the individual, are you worried about your own cash? Because this is the thing. You ca we cannot solve the problems of 50 million people. We can do our very best as leadership to be able to put out um, plans that will help people. But if you don't take the right uh, position for your own finances, Ken, you cannot be helped at whatever level. And we found this over, this is, we've been training people on personal finance over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. And you find that it does not matter how much your pay increases if you cannot manage what you already have. Okay. And so, yes, we, there is no one who is going to say we want to be taxed more. No one wants that. Obviously, you want more services, you want more opportunities. But the issue of this idea that increasing your income is somehow going to solve all your problems, that's a fallacy. And we need to address that clearly can okay. if you're going to do it as Kenyan. So mm -hmm. I mean, I'm speaking to the individual. Mm -hmm. I'm solving your problem as an individual Kenyan because okay. the government is dealing with 50 million problems. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so th that's very interesting because is it the work of us to be worried about our expenditure or is the work of the government first to ensure that we're sorted out yeah. because the rallying call is this will improve the economy eventually. Yeah. Do you see that happening? Because it's a very important question. I know I'll sort your mic and you'll come to it. Do you see that working out? Look, every government has its own plan as to how that is going to, how they will improve the economy. I don't think any government comes into place coming to say we're going to destroy everything. It's, in, it's, not, in their good, it's not in their interest. But for us as the individual, you have to be able to work within the framework that the government has allowed for you to be able to work. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this, this is a reality. It would have happened in some way, some form or the other. And so for us as individuals, we look now at what we have been given and say, okay, what are our remedies? If we are un completely unhappy with the government, next time, please vote and vote for a different government to come into place. Mm -hmm. And for all those Kenyans who didn't vote, this is one of the things that you must come back and address. We must become uh, more active in the political space. But after you have done that, we get back to our normal life. And if you get back to your normal life and you have no clue where your money is going, Ken, it does not matter what policy is in place. People were struggling before this and people will continue to struggle until we take personal responsibility and act. Are we, are we over expecting based on what he's saying? Were Kenyans over expecting or there were so much things that were said that obviously threw Kenyans off the balance so that when it looks so punitive as it's been put, then now there's a problem and everyone is faulting Mwishimiwa here for what they did. No, I don't think we were over expecting. Um, and I think as I said earlier, I think the, the Kenya Kwanza government comes to power at a very, very difficult time. So we have to understand the predicament that the government finds itself in. Because first of all, you're looking at fiscal sustainability, you have no leeway to borrow because the debt crisis is about to hit us with the distress uh, impending. Mm. Uh, and at the same time, the government had made a lot of promises to the hustlers um, and to, to, the, to, to, to many other stakeholders who made the, 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 the government come to power. So really, I think the, the, the place that Kenya Kwanzaa government took over power was an, not a very enviable position mm -hmm. for, 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 for them to be in it. Mm -hmm. I think where I differ with Oidaka, I think Yes, at an individual level, yes, we have the responsibility to, 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 to administer our own budget and our own finances. But the question one has to ask is why were states necessary in the first place? There are things we call the primary goods we expect the government to guarantee. And that's why we expect the government to be there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the, the expectations for, for, for citizens was, yes, the things were going to be tough given the circumstances we were in. But can we be in it together? And as I said earlier, I think the feeling of the Kenyan is that we are not in this together. People expected we'd have to tighten our belts because we had borrowed ourselves to a place where we could not borrow anymore. And I think next year, once the, the euro bond two billion comes due, I think we, we potentially face, face, face a, a debt distress. People appreciated that. Looking at the crisis that had brought us to this end, people had expected that. But I think, as I say, the unfairness in this is that the government is not even serious about fighting corruption in the first place and the leakages and the financial illicit, illicit flows. Kenyans are okay paying taxes because every Kenyan understands 
paying taxes and paying higher taxes is necessary for the government to guarantee the primary goods that we expect the state to do. Security, education, infrastructure, environment, health, and the likes. An enabling environment for us as citizens mm -hmm. to do what Waidaka is doing, okay. to raise resources and manage ourselves. Okay. But I think for me the critical aspect that has not been addressed is the unfairness in the Finance Act. The, so the government okay. expects us to tighten our belts, expects citizens to tighten our belts, but at the same time it continues to spend in a, what one would call a very wasteful way, okay. but also it fails to deal with corruption and the leakages and the theft and the illicit financial flows that deny the government uh, resources okay. in a very, very concrete way that we, we as Kenyans can actually stand in solidarity with the Kenya Kwanzaa government and say, yes, you we know times are tough, mm -hmm. We know you have to raise taxes, okay. but we appreciate that you've made an effort to cut down on your expenditure, to deal with corruption within the government, and to make sure that this austerity are not just for citizens, mm -hmm. but also on the side of government. I have a minute to the break, but I have to give you a right of response. So either I take the break and come back, I give you more time, or you say something in one minute, then we take a break. You know, Ken, um, I'll take a minute, because yes. at this rate, I'm not sure whether my mic will be No, your working. mic is now fine. <laughs> not be working again. <laughs> your mic is now fine. After this. You know what is really baffling? about this entire conversation is that the president signed actually three pieces of law at the same time. There was the division of revenue bill that says how much is going to the counties and how much is going to the national government. There was the Appropriations Act. The Appropriations Act is what now puts the estimates into law, saying these are going to be our expenditures for financial year 2324. And now the Finance Act that now finances the expenditures that they approved. Remember, the estimates or the budget estimates were actually subject to public participation. We had a national conversation. We had, in fact, unlike the finance uh, bill that we carried our public participation in Nairobi, the law actually requires the Committee of Budget and Appropriations to do county meetings. So they, 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 they sample, I think it's five different counties, and they held county hall meetings for public participation on what would be the budget for financial year 23, 24. So if, and, and remember the, the estimates actually came before the finance bill. So if we have agreed as a country that you're going to have a 3.7 trillion shillings budget, then you would expect us to have a conversation of how we're going to finance it. But now we are willing and we are happy to approve, actually, if you check the, the, the report on the Budget and Appropriations Committee about the proposed expenditures, we had proposals for more. We had a whole, what you call, wish list. So we're saying, fine, we appreciate that the estimates is up to 3.7 trillion, but these are our wish list. This is how much we wish to spend more. How do we finance it? So we say, fine, for us to finance this particular budget, these are the revenue sharing measures. Why aren't we having a conversation about that budget that Kenyans told us they wanted Okay. in those public participation meetings? Okay. I know I have to cut you short. When we come back, I'm going to begin with you because you. there's been a lot of people listening. We have a whole panel of Kenyans from different sectors listening here with my colleague Becky uh, on the other side. Noah Kipkeboy will also be speaking to the employers now to tell us exactly what this means that he's saying. And of course, uh, Ali Manzu is with the employees, the payslip holders. They're going to be speaking to us when we come back. But first, let's take a short break. We're back with a panel. TN News. Get the whole story.